Modern human being lives in a dynamic world where there are few mysteries of nature and of the universe left. But the Earth still keeps many amazing traces of the past. Centuries later, archaeologists discover legendary cities with their unknown culture, lost knowledge and unique treasures. Kazakhstan's Semirechi is rich with archaeological findings. At the beginning of the millennium, the city fortress, known today as the ancient Taraz, appeared in the foothills of Karatau mountain on the bank of the river Talas. Ancient Taraz is often called the city of great destiny. The first settlement in this area was founded in the 7th to 8th centuries BC by the tribal alliances of Usuns and Saks. Later, Karluk, then Kangui and Hans lived here. Han Shan Yu, this is what it says, on the banks of the river Talas, using 500 men, began to build the city, within which there were a peace-walled citadel. From the outside, the fortress was made of wood. It was the first information that the city was built here, and this city, since ancient times, from the beginning of the century until the 12th century, will play a crucial role in history. In 751, historic Talas battle took place near the city, where the cavalry of the Abbasid Caliphate, with the help of local Kalruk tribes, won over the army of Tan China. As a result, the Arabs brought Islam to the Kipchak steppe. But the heyday of ancient Taras came in the 11th to 12th centuries with the Karahanid rule. Cultural layers of that time are studied by archaeologists at the site of the historic center of modern Taras. We have digged through layers of the 10th to 12th centuries. What struck us first that the city was built by a strong ruler and it had such important features, sacred and spiritual. There is a mausoleum of Karahan, a little bit far there is Aisha Bibi mausoleum. It is hard to find something like the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi, such a masterpiece. What is it? Why was it built? For whom? This mausoleum tells us that people at that time, especially the rich noble ones, lived quite wealthy. They have established a good state structure. There is no written information about the conquest of Taraz by Mongols, but there are suggestions that in 1220 the city had a stiff resistance against Mongols, and that's why it was destroyed to the ground. The remains of fires discovered during excavations remind about those events. And when we studied the ancient settlement of Taras, unfortunately, we could not find layers of the post-Mongol time of the 13th to 14th centuries. Although materials from the territory of the city are sometimes found during construction, most likely, after Mongol invasion, the city was located somewhere nearby, close to the main city, and it was called Yangi Taras, a new Taras. But unfortunately, it became a place of a modern city nowadays. We could never find it. For many years, on the territory of the settlement of Primangol Taras, there was the central city market. A few years ago, it was moved outside the city, and archaeologists could begin excavations. The city was originally built by its general plan, as we can say in modern language. That is, from east to west, a five-meter-wide street was built. Now we have found the eastern gates, the remnants of the gate, and it was directed to the west. Where did this road lead? It led to the temple, and it was not utilitarian. This road, the main street, ended with mausoleum of Karahan. Next to it, archaeologists have found some sections of this road. So the city had a great economic and, first of all, political significance as the capital city.
Ancient Taras, like all medieval cities in Central Asia, had three main parts. Citadel was surrounded by thick walls with corner towers. There were the Hans Palace, the Treasury, Juma Mosque and Guard Post. Shahristan, or Inner City, was a dense residential area that included caravansaray, mint and madrasa. Outer city, Rabat, was inhabited by common people, craftsmen and blacksmiths. There were bazaars, baths, mosques and wells. Sometimes the Taras constructions surprise us with the fact that there is a street here, then there is a big house, one can see the place of columns, bases of columns, and straight to the house there is a paved road. And if you say that it was paved only yesterday, many will believe that fact. People had a great skill of paving roads at that time. They put the stone sidewalks right up to the front steps. Of course, it is very interesting. Medieval Taras was a flourishing green city with many fountains and irrigation ditches. The more it grew, the more water was needed. In Taras, the water supply system was established in the 6th century. Clay water pipes brought water from the river Talas to all parts of the city. The water supply system is distinguished by the fact that its sides sockets fitted perfectly. Each pipe was 60 centimeters long and up to 33 centimeters in diameter. How was water supplied to the city? According to our research, water was supplied from north to south from the Talas River through the central pipe and was distributed around the city. From the 6th century, the city of Taras had a sewage and heating systems. Not in terms of drainage and sewage system as we know it today. There were tubes to drain the dirty water. And the heating system was peculiar. There were clay pipes or simply slots in the walls under the floor, where there was a hot water. Taras was not only a major administrative metropolitan center of the Karahanit state. The ancient city was located at the crossroads of caravan routes, Medieval travelers called it the city of merchants. Taras conducted trade with major trading nations of the ancient world, China, Byzantium and Persia. And we have found the site of the city, where there was a caravansaray. Caravansarays were located not only on the Silk Road, at the crossings between the cities, but also in the cities. These caravansarays played the same role as modern trade centers or malls. Merchants from Baghdad, Ispijab, Isfahan would build a house, for example, and sit there. Merchants would come and sell goods, sign trade deals. That's where trading economic life was going on. The first archaeological park in Kazakhstan was established on the territory of the ancient Taras. From the first day of excavations, archaeologists work along with restorers. They restore the fragile ancient items, create a protective layer of crumbling walls, masonry, work on preservation of the ancient city. Archaeologists say that as soon as conservation works will be completed, it will be possible to walk on different floors of a historic ancient city. On the upper level, the cultural layers of the Karahanid era. Below, earlier layers, Karluk and under it, the city of the Hans and Kangu state. In this 
This year we had this experience, and most important experience is that we are digging, while other restorers conserve, preserve and restore. They are our most important advisors. They conserve, preserve these valuable things. All materials found during excavations are submitted to the Field Restoration Laboratory. Here, artifacts are processed, dried and repaired. Missing parts are being restored. Most of the findings are coins, pottery and metalwork of the Karahanid era. But there are some unique artifacts, which could be a scientific sensation. Crystal head of a man was a unique finding. It is about two centimeters, made of rock crystal. It has unusual face features, Egyptian hairstyle and Mongolian features. Crystal head of a man, according to scientists, of course was an important item whom it was made for and what technology was used. These are the questions scientists have yet to answer. The mysterious terracotta statuette resembling a Buddhist monk is also interesting. But the most unique finding, we can say, the sensation for archaeologists was the treasure of Taras. This jug has fragments of a silver plate, bronze bracelets encrusted with silver thread, golden jewelry, bracelets, earrings, all made of gold. Also, there were golden pendants sewn on clothes. Ancient city of Taras was rich in valuable findings. City of merchants was abandoned by its residents unexpectedly. So many things were found almost at the surface of excavations. Archaeologists have discovered the magnificent works of bronze lamps, silver and gold belts brought from overseas, and a considerable number of Turkish and Karahanid coins which were minted in ancient Taras. Treasure of gold, silver, bronze items with bracelets and coins was deliberately put into the pot. And it was intentionally hidden in a corner of a house. Second treasure was found when we cleaned the house. We noticed a recess in the wall. The archaeologist said, I noticed a completely missing dust. Probably it was a bag, and 184 coins fell out of it. It was a very big collection of Karahanid coins. During the Karahanid era, Taras was famous for its prosperous craftsmen, especially glazers, porters and glass blowers. Taraz masters had their own recognizable style. Glass items were usually greenish-blue. Ceramic yellow glaze was decorated by a brown pattern. Magnificent works of ancient masters are preserved in the Jambil Regional Local History Museum. According to the museum staff, the most interesting exhibits are sphere cones, ceramic items which are similar to balls. In peacetime, they were used for transportation and storage of various aromatic substances bound in groups of 10 to 15 pieces tied to horses or camel's rump and transported. But in wartime, such vessels could serve as a bone. They pour oil or any other flammable substance into it, then the wick was lightened up and then it was thrown to the enemy. Despite the fact that these vessels were made of clay, and the clay was of a special type, they didn't break at once. It would bounce and spread the fire to the enemy camp. Products of Taras craftsmen were transported to the Great Silk Road by enterprising merchants. 
Ambassadors, pilgrims, scholars and craftsmen also traveled along the road with merchants. Evidences about the original grandeur of ancient Taraz were left by Byzantine ambassadors Zemar and Chinese travelers. Diplomatic missions came to Taraz before the city has lost its capital status and the capital has been moved to Uzgent. Turkic Kagans solved issues of war and peace in Taraz. It was an arena of solving international, peaceful, diplomatic and military problems and disputes. People from Steppe always came and settled here. What caused the decline of the capital of the Karahanids? Why did the city transform into a small farming village at the end of the 12th century? Scientists assume that a feud between Turkic rulers was the reason of it. Therefore, the land of the Karahanids was conquered by neighboring countries. On the other hand, the fall of the city is associated with suspension of trade on the Silk Road. But Taras had not disappeared without a trace. Today, one can see massive walls of the old city in the archaeological park of ancient Taras. You can walk along its paved roads if you want to understand and comprehend the history of the 2,000-year-old city.